Hello everyone, welcome to the Zebra Developers. This is going to be a uh, session on LinkOS hands-on with Xamarin. My name is Danil Roshkoff. I'm a software engineer at Zebra Technologies and I'll be your presenter today. Um, let's start off with the, the first, the basics. What is Xamarin? Xamarin is a .NET and c -sharp development platform. It's made by Microsoft. It allows seamless development for different types of applications and platforms. Uh, it supports Android, iOS, tvOS, watchOS, macOS, and Windows. Xamarin apps are native to the platform operating system. Uh, with the last two bullet points, uh, your apps will be uniform and behave the way the users expect without loss of performance and also look the same between all of your uh, operating systems that you're developing your app for. Uh, the next slide is going to be an uh, overview on our SDK. So our Xamarin SDK is part of a LinkOS multi-platform SDK, which can be found on zebra.com. Uh, our most current version of LinkOS multi-platform SDK is 2.15.1, which was released uh, around December 2018, and it includes Xamarin.net and c -sharp SDK. You can find more information on the LinkOS multi-platform SDK on uh, the Zebra website. Uh, Xamarin SDK is available also on Nougat.org. Our most current version on the uh, that website is Xamarin SDK uh, 2.15.2634. Uh, you would normally find that version when you're programming in Visual Studio and you're trying to update your NuGet uh, dependencies. Uh, that version is going to have a slightly different name on there. It's going to be going to be called Zebra Printer SDK versus uh, Link OS Multi-Platform SDK on our website. Um, Zebra SDK supports a wide variety of Zebra printers and mobile devices. The list uh, is as follows, but not limited to card printers, mobile, desktop, industrial, and kiosk printers. We also support Android 4.4 and up. We support iOS 10 up, Windows Mobile 5 and up, and Windows CE 5 and up. Full list of supported printers and devices can also be found on our website. Uh, iOS uh, requires whitelisting white listing of your apps. So every iOS app that is utilizing specifically Bluetooth using external accessory framework functionality of our SDK will need to be whitelisted. Uh, the process is usually as follows. You'll develop your app. You'll send your app for Zebra to review. Once we approve your app, you can submit your app to the Apple Store on the, for the upload on the Apple Store. Whitelisting is not required if your app communicates with Zebra products via WLAN, Bluetooth Low Energy, or standard Bluetooth profile. Uh, the whitelisting is only applying to for the Bluetooth using an external accessory framework. Uh, finally, for the whitelisting, it requires reapproval. So anytime you uh, make updates to your app, you will have to make a request to get a whitelisted again before you can submit it to the Apple uh, Store. You can find more whitelisting information also on our website. Uh, FYI, every anytime I mention on a website, all of these URLs are going to be included uh, in the PowerPoint when it's shared with you at the later time. Okay, next I'm going to go over uh, one example for how we use our Xamarin SDK. An example is going to be on printing uh, over Bluetooth specifically. Uh, so 
Xamarin supports other types of connections, such as WLAN, USB, and others. You can review the full list of supported connections and platform restrictions inside ZebraLink OS multi-platform SDK for Xamarin Tech Docs. Link will also be included for this. Uh, so let's go over the example. Uh, this is a basic class that I create, just created just as a sample example. You will need a MAC address. I put in a dummy MAC address in there uh, for testing purposes. But we'll start off by creating a connection variable with a generic connection type. Uh, useful note, uh, you can reuse your connection variable for other connections. So let's say you want to make your app smart where it connects over uh, USB and Bluetooth. You can reuse that same connection uh, variable in the same object for multiple connections, multiple types of connections. Uh, now, uh, with this example, I'm going to go over one way on how you can control your Xamarin connection. We use Connection Manager in here, and we use Dependency Service to get to our Connection Manager. So use your dependency service to retrieve the connection by using the MAC address dependency service that get will reach out to your iConnection manager interface, which will then return the connection based on the platform you are on, such as iOS versus Android. So the way we have it set up here is that uh, our dependency service is controlling uh, which portion of the Xamarin SDK to reach out to for iOS versus Android in our example. Um, uh, keep in mind that dependency service is one of the many ways you can achieve retrieving a connection using our SDK. You can see another example in our tech docs as well. Okay, once we uh, uh, get all that set up, this is uh, a snippet of how our uh, iConnection manager looks like or it could look like, which will include all of your connection methods. In our case, I only have one get Bluetooth connection method in here for uh, demo purposes. iConnection Manager would live in your main project. So you can see on the right-hand side, side how we have four different projects. We have the Xamarin Dev Demo, then we have the Dev Demo for Android, iOS, and the Windows platform. Uh, Dev Demo would be the main one that controls your uh, main app and then it goes into Android and iOS, depending on which OS you're running the app on. Um, uh, next, we're finally getting into our Android code. When Xamarin knows which OS you're on, it will divert to the interface. Uh, to the proper class. In this example, I'm showing the code snippet of Android Connection Manager implementation, which extends iConnection Manager interface. Here, we're using our Xamarin SDK to retrieve a new Bluetooth connection on line 11 uh, for Android by using the MAC address and returning it as a connection class. Uh, so line 11 would be the portion that would be different for potentially different for iOS versus Android, uh, because we want to make sure that we're pointing to the proper uh, Android or iOS uh, example. Uh, now, finally, once we retrieved uh, in this example on line 11, our connection based on which OS you're running on, we can open the connection by calling the dot open call for it. <clears throat> Once the connection is open, you can proceed communicating with the printer via Bluetooth by requesting reads, writes, and other useful methods. You can see in the example uh, some of the methods that are available to you uh, past the opening, the connection. Now, uh, once we open the connection, we can do a multitude of other things. But in this example, we're going to go over printing. So we can go ahead and send a print job to our printer. We will start off 
by making a string variable with our ZPL format that we're planning on sending to our printer, such as one in line 10. It's just a dummy uh, ZPL format for testing purposes. Before printing, it is best practice to check if the connection is connected and to check the status of the printer. Uh, it is important to check the status of the printer because you never know what the printer is doing at the time you're printing. Uh, the print, can, print head could be open, you could be out of media, uh, and other potential cases. To check the status of the printer, we made a check printer status method, uh, which uses the connection variables to create a new zebra printer object. You can then use the zebra printer object to get the status of the printer. Some of the printer status examples could be print head open, media out, print head is too hot, and many others which you can find in the, in the documentation. The main one to look for here is if the printer status is ready to print. If it is, then we can send a print job to it. Otherwise, we should resolve whatever the status may be. Uh, most statuses you will not be able to resolve uh, via software in a way, because uh, there's no way to close your media uh, print head. Uh, so some of them will have to be done uh, physically when uh, you go to that specific printer. Uh, so once we took care of the check-in printer status and our connection is connected, we can go ahead and write our ZPL to our printer. Uh, Zebra printers love ZPL, but we need to make sure we're sending it with a proper UTF-8 encoding. Once we send out our ZPL using the right method on the connection, it is once again best practice to check our printer status again and finally close the connection. Uh, so once again, to quickly go over uh, what we just talked about, to open the connection, you will need to create a connection class. You will need to use the proper SDK uh, code, Android or iOS, to get the connection uh, created. Once the connection is created, you can open the connection. Uh, then to be able to print, it's always best practice to check the printer status. So you'll check if the connection is connected and check if the printer status is ready to connect. Once that is done, you can send a ZPL. You need to make sure that the ZPL is in a UTF-8 format so the printer is happy. Once the printer has received your print job or whatever you're doing, uh, make sure to check for status again and make sure nothing uh, happened during the print of your ZPL, such as media out or anything like that. And then finally, do not forget to close the connection. OK, and uh, the last slide is a little bit of a short and sweet preview of what is uh, coming up with ZebraLink OS Xamarin SDK. Uh, one of the things that have been we, we've been working on is Android and iOS iOS Bluetooth low energy support. Uh, it will be released as an add-on to the original SDK. So when installing it, you have a choice of having a regular SDK that supports the normal connections that we already do, Bluetooth, WLAN, USB, and others. Uh, and then you can install this add-on if you want to support the support of Bluetooth Low Energy for Android and iOS. Uh, and then a lot of bug fixes are going to be coming in as well. Uh, we currently do not have a release date for this, uh, but it should be coming out sometime soon. Thank you for joining, everyone. I greatly appreciate your time. We're now going to open the live Q&A session to answer any questions you might have. We'll also be showing a demo of our Xamarin uh, SDK demos. To join, please scroll down and click the Join Q&A button next to the session and agenda.